What's up, everybody? Jason here for jazbeescasebreaks.com. 2023 Tops Chrome Jumbo 8-box case break. Pikachu number 4 just sold out. All cards ship here, guys. And it is another case down. Last ball, Mojo Ken Bond taking the Dodgers. I haven't seen much Dodgers yet, guys. But I'm hoping right here, guys, get a nice big hit right here. I'm calling Super Fractor. Let's go. Thank you, Ken Bond. Good luck, buddy. Let's get another Jumbo case in the books. We have another case already lined up that potentially can go, uh, which is Pikachu number five. Uh, that one, I believe, is at uh, one left as well, so. Look, man, that's what I'm saying, man. Like, you just never know. They're 30 bucks. I mean, maybe they don't have the craziest players or rookies in their checklist, but it doesn't mean they don't have hits. There's still hits in there for them. I mean, think about it. $30 raise and a double header. Let's take a look at the Tampa Bay Rays while we're breaking this. I guarantee you it's like not that bad in the sense that like if you do get a nice low numbered hit, it probably pays for the spot. Yeah, you have Jonathan around the rookies. Rondi Rosarena base with Wander Franco, Brian Allow, and then Drew Rasmussen. You have one rookie autograph with Aranda, but then you have Taco Fractors, guys. Taco Fractors is what you want. You got Wander Franco, Taco Fractor, Francisco Mejia, Vidal Brujan, Josh Lowe. Um, Aranda and Jose Siri. I did hit a Jose Siri Taco Fractor earlier today. Then you have a Expose Wander Franco to 10. Then you have a Youth Quake Wander Franco. So again, you just hit one of those like that. You just never know. Exactly, Tristan. So you got him here in the jumbo. But yeah, the double header, like I said, they're still available there. That one's a $30 team. In two cases of hobby. So obviously that is 24 boxes compared to eight. Obviously you get three autos here. Same amount of autographs actually in the double header, but. You made tacos today, but you didn't eat a single one. What kind of tacos did you make today, man? I'm, I'm a little hungry, man. Breakfast. I kind of just made like a like a little uh, call it guava red, like bananas with a little bit of chocolate powder, some milk, and then I just kind of ate some popcorn. We have like little snacks here at the shop, and we ate some of those like skinny pop popcorns. I ate like two bags of that. That's pretty much what I ate for, for breakfast today. So I'm starting to get a little hungry. So my wife's like, "Let's go to Chick Fil A." I was like, "Sure." You just have to pick it up. So she's gonna pick us some Chick-fil-A for us. Ow, okay, no, dude, that's shit's fired off. I mean, honestly, Taco Bell isn't really the choice anywhere no more. I mean, I don't know. Is there a place that it is? I mean, I rarely eat Taco Bell, too. It's just more like, that's what I grew up eating. Like, not a lot, but like my, my grandma across the street that lived with us. And the, across the street, sorry. She, like, loved the Chihuahua from Taco Bell commercials, so. She's already, you know, she, she passed away in, like, her late, ni late 90s, like, 96, 97, so. At that point later on, she wasn't really making any home-cooked home meals, so she kind of, like, more eating like 
you know, kind of out a little bit, which, oh, whatever, she lived a long life. But yeah, she, she ate a lot of Taco Bell, like the tacos, she liked the, the flavor of it, which it's probably not the healthiest food option to eat, obviously, but I mean, I don't know, sometimes I used to hit the spot. But yes, yeah, obviously for us, yeah, here in LA, especially uh, if you're Latino Mexican, not even that, just, I mean, I have so many taco spots that I can go to all around me, except here. In this area, for most of these, it's really not too much. <laughs> but, but yeah, you know, Taco Bell, I don't, I don't know, man. I still get it every once in a while. I just like the crunchy tacos. You have a good Bedia taco spot, though. Nice. Yeah, I love Bedia, man. Bedia is so good. Yeah, I went to a taco spot down the street from my apartment uh, a few nights ago, I think it was. I think Monday night. I hadn't had it in a little bit. I got some carnitas tacos, and then I got uh, El Pastor, you know, right off the, the trompo. So it's cool, you know, guys cutting it and stuff. It's delicious. Del Taco. You know, my wife actually likes Del Taco. And my brother-in-law used to eat the burgers from there. They have burgers, right? I will say though, I feel like when I, the times I've eaten Del Taco, I felt like it did taste a little fresher. <laughs> like it didn't, it, like when I ate it, I just, I didn't, I didn't feel as bad eating it. Is that, is that something you can say? I feel like you can say that. That's the kind of like vibes I got when I ate Taco Bell. I mean, uh, Del Taco. I love carnitas, man. It's my favorite. There's a spot that, like, my dad, my my, 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 my family's bigger on my dad's side, so, you know, there was a spot that he went to when he first came here to the States, uh, in his late teens, early 20s. He went to, like, two places where my, where my aunt lives in Boyle Heights, you know. One spot he went to was called, uh, El Tepeyac. And right there, you can get like these manual special burritos. You can get like Hollenbeck burritos. Obviously, it's just a Mexican joint place. So I don't know. I like introduced it to all of my family there in the sense that like that's all we. I like, got. I still eat that to this day. Like I still go back there every once in a while. But then the other place that he got introduced to it for a second meal in the United States was this uh, little carnita spot called Cinco Puntos. That is delicious carnitas. Still have the old lady. I, I swear to God, the old ladies that are still there flipping the tortillas are literally the same ladies that were there when I was a kid. And uh, just delicious. You know, right, Gilo? Yeah, you can't explain the taste either, but I don't feel as guilty. Either. Yeah, it's like if I go eat pollo loco. You know, pollo loco just seems so like actually okay, healthy. You know. <laughs> Corbin Carroll to three ninety nine. Out of all those years too, I don't think I've ever tried like the Mexican pizza, and I feel like that was a big deal when they took that off the menu. I feel like so many people like got so upset, but then they brought it back. Caleb Killian. Gorman. I mean, a lot of people still obviously. I mean, Baja Baja Blast, right, was like a big thing, and you can only get it there at one point before they started making it in bottles and stuff. I used to like getting Code Red there when I was a kid. All right, here we go. Whoa, 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 what do we got here? Derek Hall for the Phillies. Gossman to 299. 
<sighs> Alright, you guys are making me too hungry now. Can't wait to eat my spicy chicken sandwich when it gets here. <laughs> America to score to tie it. Nah, man, for reals. I mean, I, I'm lucky enough. I'm happy that my <laughs> my parents are my my yeah. I guess my parents, but uh, Michael Stefanik, my my dad really came to this to California. Get a little piece of home living here in LA. And not even just that, guys. Obviously, living in a big city, like around the big city, like LA. Obviously, for us, you get obviously a lot of good Mexican, but also a lot of different cultures, a lot of different food options here in LA. You just gotta drive around, though, you know. But chalupas, chalupas was what the? I'm trying to think of the chalupas. That there's like the one they just put cheese around, but like the flour tortilla, and then they had the like normal. Normal uh, taco shell. Is that chalupa? And Brian uh, for the Seattle Mariners at 49. Oh, Kifi? Kifi? Fly flower. Yeah, that's, that's what I was like. Yeah, I don't think I ever had that either, dude. That was very simple. I just like the crunchy tacos there. My mom used to get like the, I remember she always used to get like, what is it called, the, like Nachos Bel Grande or something like that. One time my nephew though, man, like a few years ago, he, he was sleeping over at my parents' house one time when I was there. He brought like this one crazy like nacho box. It was like legit, like as big as a table almost. I don't know if they even still have that. But it was around during the time of like COVID too, like during the lockdown. It was the craziest nachos box I've ever seen. And that dude almost ate it all. <laughs> Yeah, Chick-fil-A's clutch. I, I, when Chick-fil-A started getting really big here in California, especially LA, I used to get it a lot. I also love their Cobb salad. I like getting that. Their soups are pretty good too. I like getting their chicken tortilla soup when it's uh, in season, poorly. But uh, I'm one of those guys, Tristan. <laughs> those taco, those taco about ta those, uh, those ta Jack in the Box tacos are not bad. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's because that's something I also grew up eating. I don't know what's in them. Don't care. But it was not bad. Especially if they were two for one. Jermaine Palacios. I can't explain the taste either. It just it just wasn't bad. So every time I... Every, I don't really go to Dragon Balls at all. Much of it, but if I do go, I always get tacos there. Nachos? I need to try. I know you were talking about it last time, Tris. I need to. I need to. I need to try some of your uh, birria dumplings that you're talking about, man. That just sounds fire. Are they still two for a dollar? I know here they're not two for a dollar. I think you have to buy it through the app to get a two for a dollar. Sourdough Jack, I, yeah. I still actually, if I ever still go, I still get a Jumbo Jack, like from Jack in the Box, but I, I substitute for sourdough bread. Is what I usually do. <laughs> I almost say anything to what. And a nice uh, George Springer negative. Yeah, don't get me started on Costco, guys. You know what's so funny? Every, I think we can all connect with food, right? <laughs> Costco pizza, baby. Still one of my favorite pizzas out there. A slice of pep and a hot dog. Ooh, there's our first red. George Kirby to five for the Seattle Mariners. Future stars. Nice one there for the Seattle Mariners. That's going to Frank. I seen they just recently added like this mango smoothie. Has anybody tried that? And nice Sanga. 
There we go. We're trying to get some nice little colors and inserts. That is a radiating, uh, radiating rookie for the New York Mets. Going to John. Oh, wow. Did Morgan score? Oh, offside flag is up. Um, I think the CEO of like Costco said that they will raise other prices of other products before they ever raise the hot dog price. Just like their chicken. Anytime I go to Costco, I, I come back with their five dollar rotisserie chicken, and it's just a steal. I think even that they also lose money on, but brings them into the store, and obviously you can raise the prices of other stuff. Will Benson. Guardians. Chicken bakes are solid. I haven't had those in a while. I usually, when I go to Costco, I just get pizza and hot dog. I like it when they have their combo. They have Polish hot dogs too. I got rid of those though. Kettle Marte. And another Will Benson. This time it's number to one out of nine. That's Guardians going to Adam Kupperman. Alec Manoa, 199. I don't do this all the time, Tristan, but I like these good LA street dog, bell peppers, onions, right? You know, cook right there on the grill. A little mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard, maybe a little chile in there, a little jalapenos maybe or something like that. But, I mean, obviously, I think when I go to Costco, I mean, I'm pretty plain. I just get, like, ketchup and a little bit of mayo. Mainly just ketchup. But, but those LA Street dogs, though, like that, I'll definitely get those dogs like that all the time. Yeah, here in LA, like, when you go to, like, any concerts, festivals, you know, end of any any sporting events. There's always people here with little hot dog carts, just ready to sell those hot dogs. Man, I think they're like 10 bucks now too. But yeah, they, they roast like right on the grill right there, they roast the bacon hot dogs, bacon wrap hot dogs, and they roast like bell peppers, onions. It's, it's pretty good. Chili cheese would be nice, yeah? I feel like a chili cheese hot dog. I'm pretty sure, David, you probably would, I would have got destroyed too if you were in Chicago for that, right? I just remember, does anybody watch the bear? <laughs> it's so funny. I'm honestly, I'm okay eating a hot dog with just ketchup. I mean, I'm not, I, there's nothing, I'm okay with that. That's what I grew up eating it, but I remember the bear, they kind of had that funny segment in season one. Uh, Detroit hit right there to 499. When uh, I think Carmi's asking his cousin, you know, Richie was like, where's the ketchup at? He's like, I, I didn't bring no ketchup. <laughs> He's like, uh, why didn't you bring any ketchup? He goes, because he goes, what f off is gonna put ketchup on their hot dog? And he's like, kids, Richie. <laughs> it was so funny. Corbin Carroll at three ninety nine. Yeah, I think some people like Chicago are really against like straight up ketchup on their hot dogs, right? They don't think that you should have any ketchup on your hot dog at all. You know what, Tristan? I visited New York. Like, I visited New York City last year after the National for, uh, in Atlantic City. I went to Times Square and all that. <clears throat> um, the next day, on Sunday, on uh, Monday or Sunday. And that's what I noticed a lot, actually. I noticed a lot of those like halal chicken stands or like lamb and stuff like that. I did see a lot of those all over the city. 156 out of 250. I mean, I did see some hot dog stands, don't get me wrong, but Waldichuk. 
But I did see a lot of that. I didn't try it though, but... No way. Is it really that? Oh man. I mean, I might have went to Portillo's one time and just got ketchup on my hot dog, but I don't know if they noticed it. Yeah. I don't know, man. People shouldn't judge. <laughs> like, if they don't agree with it, you can kind of be like, oh, okay, but can't be that offended. Negative Matt Chapman. Barraza. Oh my god. Tommy Henry. Yeah, that was the that was the play too for me as a kid. I used to my, my dad used to call it uh, Winnie Go Level when I was a little kid and for my nephew too. And you see, he used to just uh, cut up little pieces of hot dog, put them on the pan with some oil. Once they were kind of a little 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 burnt, cooked, and throw in the egg, let it mix with the egg. That, that's clutch right there. I see that all the time when I was a kid. Alrighty guys, so there's the first four boxes. There are a lot of nice autos. So there you go. Definitely still looking for more. We did get a couple of Corbin Carroll colors, which is great there for the Diamondbacks for Big Dog. So I haven't seen a Corbin Carroll auto yet, but did get that uh, red, that Senga, and then a couple of Corbin Carrolls there. So hopefully a lot more hiding. That's one thing living down here in LA, I, I kind of still haven't tried. People kind of laugh at me for doing that, but I've never been to like a ramen place. And I've always wanted to, but like, honestly, I kind of like to blame my wife. I've, I've been with her since like, I, high school really. And she's not a ramen person at all. So it's like, I have to go with somebody else that goes eats ramen. But I haven't been to like a ramen place, but I mean, I love ramen though. That was one thing though, when she was like in college too, like a lot of her friends used to go to a couple of nice spots in near LMU and stuff and they'd always eat. I'm like, damn, I wanna go. No, she doesn't like anything like that. My wife is very, very picky, dude. Like super picky. Very picky. That's my thing. I feel like I like to blame her though. I need to go with somebody that eats all that, you know? Just be like, take me. A couple of my cousins though always be going all the time and I've been hitting them up like, man, you gotta, I gotta go with you guys. But that's where I wanna go. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, I'm gonna get a, I'm finally getting a, an arm tattoo uh, in a few weeks. The only tattoo I have on my body is on my calf. It's just this huge, huge koi fish that just covers my whole calf, my whole leg almost. That's the one I got when I was 18. I haven't got a tattoo since, but I'm finally gonna start expanding.
Yeah. Well, it was funny because my cousin, one of my cousins, he actually, um, he actually was like a little bit of like a tattoo artist. I mean, he was really, but he was doing it a lot during the time he tattooed my calf, so he was doing it. Um, and uh, when I when I was a kid, I was just like, oh man, you gonna give me a tattoo when I turn eighteen? Like you know, cause my parents would never let me have a tattoo at the time. But once I turned eighteen, they couldn't stop me, obviously. So uh, yeah, when I finally turned eighteen, he's like, all right, I'll do one tattoo for you. I won't charge you. Just just buy me something to drink or you know buy me food. He's like, but make it worth it. And I was like, all right. And I was gonna get the koi fish on my arm, actually. I wanted to kind of like do a whole sleeve at one point. I don't know. I guess I just let my eagle get to me, but like one of my friends got a koi fish on his arm. And I was like, man, no, dude. Like I've been talking about this for a while now. So I just decided to put it on my cap instead. And yeah, he just did it pretty big in my cap. And I don't ever had since, but finally just gonna expand. Just, I've been wanting to get like a tribute tattoo. Um, for my dad when he passed away a few years ago with COVID, so I'm gonna kind of recreate his tattoo that he had on his arm here, uh, and then just put like his nickname in there instead of the the name he had in there. Yeah, I mean I've kind of always liked like Japanese like type of tattoos, and I just remember people always meant like koi fish is meant like a little good luck, and always to like. If you were gonna tattoo it on your body to kind of face it going upstream, to always you know say that you're always you know gonna keep on going, obviously getting better, rather than going like downstream. So I just always like koi fish. I thought that would always look cool. Yeah, no, I mean, no, I, I'm not saying I, I needed it to mean something. I just I just didn't know what I wanted to put on my body, obviously. You know, for me, it's just more like, if I was gonna like, I just didn't want to feel like, you know, what am I doing with like my body with just putting random stuff? I and mean, that's just me though, obviously, you know? So that's why I just never really did it, but now I just feel like it's finally time. A lot of my family, well, a lot of my like cousins of my age and stuff like that and friends, they're, they're all tattooed now and stuff, so. I just never did it, but now I finally kind of want to just start it. So, I'll probably do like a bunch of like tribute stuff or something like that. Make it like mash, you know, kind of deal. I don't know, that's just me, I guess. But no, I mean, you guys should see Teddy. Teddy had tattoos all over his body. <laughs> and he's just like, yeah, I wanted Dan Marino on my calf. I wanted this here, this here. <laughs> But yeah, no. If if I I I wish I would just want to just put stuff on, on as a tattoo. It does get pricey nowadays though. But I do have a former football coach that I used to have when I was in high school. He became a, like a legit tattoo artist, like legit. So I definitely got hooked up by him. And I've always re I referred him to a, a lot of people too. A lot of my cousins. He did all their arms, back, neck. He's done a couple of my tattoos for my sister. My sister got like a tribute tattoo for like my dad on her back, which is really cool. So when I hit him up, he was able to give me a good price. Dragon Ball Z? Damn, that's, that sounds sick. You know, I, I probably would. I, I probably would, g -Lo. But that's something we'd have to tell Nick. Get like a 5% discount for life or something? <laughs> 10%? I don't know. of all Casey teams I, I think Nick would do that I think he would I think he would I'd do that if it was my company Manny Machado oh he just missed it all right we got Carlos Perez
Yeah, yeah, I think, you, I think, yeah, that is true. I think you'd probably have to get like somewhere where people can see it, right? I mean, if you're gonna put it like on your shoulder arm, if you're not wearing like a cutoff, who's gonna see that, right? Oscar Colas, that's a, that's a good point, Adam. Maybe if you get it on your face, you definitely get better percentages. That makes a little bit more sense. Awesome, Tristan. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. You know, maybe I'll give you a little bit, a little bit more of a discount if you kind of put it like your lower back, like a little stamp. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. We got uh, Luis to two ninety nine. Liberato, Liberato. Yeah, dude, for reals, right? I, I would contemplate getting like an Eagles tattoo on me, like for my favorite sports teams. I did want to get like a Kings logo tattoo. I mean, I love LA, right? City I grew up in. I'd get like a Kings or LA logo, you know, on my body. I mean, I guess you have to start somewhere, right? Then you start building around it. But yeah, for me, I, I don't know. I guess I was just always afraid of getting, like, arm tattoos. I don't know. I guess just growing up, you know, people always say, like, oh, you know, you're, what happens if you get this proper job? You, you, you know, you're going to have to, you're going to have to, you know, cover it up all the time. I don't know. I just... I got into all that probably as a younger kid, so I never really did it. But now as an older guy, I'm just like, you know what, it's curious. Everybody has tattoos now almost. Uh, Brewer, Hicklin. That's what I'm saying. Nowadays, I feel like it is, but I felt like when I was a little kid and I wanted to get tattoos, it was like a big thing where like, oh, you shouldn't get it. Like, you know, it's going to ruin your chances, you know. Yeah, I guess you just be your own boss, right? Jasper's is not against tattoos, so. <laughs> I'm Gucci. If he doesn't give you a part of the company that you'll create your own next door. <laughs> my dad and mom weren't really against tattoos in the sense they just didn't want me blasting my whole body. Because <laughs> like, you know, I was just a joke with them saying that I would do that one day. Like if I, if I actually knew what I wanted, I would have definitely got sleeved up already. Just for morale. Ten year old with a text. Oh my god. I don't know if I allow that. Austin Riley. Oh my god. What is going on over here with the USA game? The 250. And Drew Waters. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's what I'm saying, Jill. That's how I am, too. That's why I feel like I, when I got my first tattoo, I was okay with where it was. And then I just stopped for all these years. Always contemplating, like, oh, I'm down to do this. Like, yeah, I'm even contemplating getting my dad's tattoo on my arm, you know? But I already made that decision. But it's just more like that, you know? Sometimes I just, I'm too indecisive where I just get too much of my feelings just like oh, I don't know I don't know you know do I really want this do I really want this but I definitely deep down do want that though so I'm gonna definitely pull through with that PJ, have you heard about the rumors regarding Taco Fighters being part of a, some type of huge promotion that Tops has in a movie? No, I have not, PJ. The only thing I know that they announced that they are doing was uh, the MVP buyback. So, obviously, if I were you guys, everything does ship. I would keep, you know, if you bought, like, the Angels, anybody that you think may win MVP, I would definitely keep all the base because, obviously, 
or all of these cards actually hold on to them because like let's say Otani wins a MVP or you know Ronald Acuna wins the MVP then obviously colors numbered cards or you know base you'll be able to do that MVP buyback again where you can get some money back at your local card shops at a 350 NJ Melendez but no I haven't heard anything about the Taco Refractor yet I thought that's what they were doing, Tristan. I thought they were gonna put them in like archives or something, but maybe they're holding out for something else. Maybe they're gonna have their own product, but I don't, I haven't seen them put anything. Did they put it back in archive series? David Villard. All the others say if you pull one of the top factors, hold on to it for something. Oh, wow. Yeah, so obviously, I mean, obviously, it wouldn't be a bad buy to get, like, the Braves, the Angels, anybody that you think is in contention. I mean, hey, Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts have a chance. I mean, Freddie Freeman, man, his stats are pretty close to what Ronald Acuna is doing, minus just the stolen bases, you know. So, obviously, I think it's more like Otani's probably going to win the AL one, right? But NL one still, I think, still has a chance. So, you never know. There's still a lot of baseball to be played left. Injuries can happen and stuff like that. Eaton. You have a Cal Stevens. <laughs> Free Taco Bell for life. <laughs> I know they should have. They should have done a. They should have done a Taco Bell promotion. Like if you collect like all the Taco Fractors, you can do the complete set. You know, like Free Taco Bell for life or something like that. Make it interesting. Well, PJ. I mean, if you pull a Taco Fractor, definitely hold on to it. Then don't sell it. And we got Freddie Furman to 250. <laughs> I know you did. They're going to park around with like Jack in the Box. No, they would probably park up with like Taco Bell. I mean, uh, Del Taco. A little bit more healthier, you know? And a gold for the Rays. Right now. Or low? Is that what they say? Low or low? I forget which one it is. And Langleyers. Oh, that's right. That's for the ra that's for the race, right? Yeah. Trump. Did I hear today that uh, Shohei Otani is now off the trading block? Like they're just gonna let it ride and try to make the playoffs? I had a feeling that wasn't going to happen, man. I, I didn't think they would actually trade Otani. They must still be in contention to resign him. Or at least that's what Otani's telling him. Oh, Josh Lowe is low, but then Brandon Lau? I think it's Brandon Lau. Louis Varlin. Alright, that's the last little stack right there. I feel like autograph wise. In fact we're still missing a big one, right? Yeah. I think we're missing
use some big one. Hopefully we get something nice for her. Cody Bellinger, Tyler O'Neill. Well, there's Nolan Gorman. That helps. 165 out of 499. And that's for the Cardinals and Tyler. I just, I don't understand that. I, I don't know. A lot of people like to talk and say that he's only staying on the West Coast because obviously a little closer to Japan and stuff like that, which I can see that being happening, but I don't know. I, I just feel like if there's any chance of him leaving out uh, the Angels, it's going to be with like the other two teams that had a chance with him. With the Dodgers, obviously, and like Seattle. I feel like he, I mean, he must want to just stay in the West Coast then. Because money's not going to be the problem. Taylor Ward, he's going to get money wherever he goes. But he must just want to be somewhere in the West Coast again. Waldachuk. Athletics. But watch him shock us all and he just re-signs with the Angels. <laughs> Happy Rutschman. Cedric Mullins to 99. And there you go. I have a feeling he's going to resign the Angels too, Kevin. I don't know. We're all over here all speculating and wanting him to come to our team, and then he's just going to pull that monster contract with the Angels. <laughs> and then everyone's going to be like, he's going to regret it. You know. He should have left. He's not going to win anything there. Alrighty, guys. And there you go. So, I feel like that Nolan Gorman was a nice one here towards the end. But, again, still some nice stuff popping out of here, of course. Got a gold there. We did get our, finally our first red today in this case. Waldichuk. There's that Nolan Gorman again. Of course they do, Rex. Do you not know that uh, they're here in the Los Angeles market? Langleers, Furman, Eaton, Villar, Aguilar, Waters, Hicklin, Perez, Henry, Waldichuk. Couple of the same names all over again. Benson, Palacios, Corey Lee, Hall, Gillian, Keefe. It's a red right there, George Kirby, Senga. And we got two Corbin Carrolls. And then of course, like I said, that Nolan Gorman. So appreciate it guys, there you go. Again, that was Pikachu number four. Number five, I think might be sold out. I'm not sure. But it won't happen until after I take a little bit of a dinner break. But, um, yeah, one left, and it looks like we're still at five left right there, guys. So let's definitely get that rolling. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com.